Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today bacteriology topic on Serratia marcescens. First, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. And you keep showing your support to this channel. Let's see the table of contents of our today's topic. First, we'll go through the introduction, classification, habitat, morphology, cultural characteristics, biochemical characteristics, basic characteristics, viral factors, pathogenesis, clinical manifestation, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and lastly, research on cancer. Let's start with a brief introduction of Serratia marcescens. Hospital acquired illnesses have been linked to the gram negative bacillus Serratia marcescens, a member of Enterobacteria family since the 1990s. Gram negative motile rods without endospores are Serratia species. Serratia marcescens is widely dispersed in the nature. This organism was originally known by the name Serratia marcescens which Bizio gave it in 1823. It has also been known by other names in the past, such as Chromobacterium proteogeosum. The crimson pigment proteogeosin is generally produced by environmental isolates of Serratia marcescens, and this growth was once frequently mistaken for fresh blood. Serratia marcescens was originally believed to be a virgin, non-pathogenic, saprophytic, water bacterium that was commonly used as a biological marker because of its striking red colonies. After studying a limited sample of cases in 1896, Professor Sechelin of the University of Stelberg came to the conclusion that this organism resulted in more facilities than many harmful germs. Serratia marcescens has now been connected to every source of illness under the sun, including wound infections, UDI, septicemia, meningitis, and respiratory tract infections. Patients with chronic, debilitating diseases used to be the only ones who would contract infection from it. Now let's head to the classification of Serratia marcescens. It is a member of a genus Serratia of the family Enterobacteriaceae. There are now 14 recognized species of Serratia, eight of which are connected to human illnesses. Serratia marcescens Serratia liquefacin and Serratia odorifera are three of the eight species that has been related to clinical illnesses that are most well known. Among all Serratia species, Serratia marcescens is the most common clinical isolate and a serious human pathogen. It belongs to the kingdom of bacteria. Subkingdom is Negibacteria. Belongs to the phylum of Proteobacteria. Class is Gamma Proteobacteria, Order Enterobacterial, Family Enterobacteria, Genus Serratia, and Species Marcenus. Let's go to the habitat of Serratia marcenus. It was shown to be a typical saprophytic bacterium in food, especially starchy kinds, that provide an ideal development habitat. This bacteria can be found on soil and water surfaces as well as on plants insects and gastrointestinal systems of vertebrates. Let's dive into the morphology. It is a bacillus that has a rounded ends and measurements of 0.5 mm to 0.8 mm in width and 0.9 mm to 2.0 mm in length. There are peritichoids fatilla and they are frequently moving. Serratia marcinus clonies are opaque Range in size from 1.5 to 2.0 mm, frequently have a reddish or pink color from the formation of pigment and have a peculiar order similar to urine connected to the generation of ammonia and trimethylamide. These characteristics are visible after 24 hours of incubation at 37 degrees Celsius. Clonies produced by certain strains are typically pale or grayish and are not colored. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Cultural Characteristics of Serratia marcescens. The capacity of Serratia marcescens to grow and strive in unfavorable conditions such as in disinfecting, antiseptics and double distilled water 
implies supports this claim. Although it may grow in temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius and as high as 40 degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature for growth. It is a well recognized for producing the red pigment protegeosin. It is made up of three priol rings and is produced at temperatures below 30 degrees Celsius. Cerisia marcinis or McConkey agar. Conflex, effuse, colorless clonies with erratic, burnt edges formed on McConkey agar and turn pink after 48 hours, a late lactose fermenter. Cerisia marcinis on blood agar. Convex, elevated, grayish clonies with a constructed Hemolysis zone might be spotted on blood agar. Cerisia marcinans on chocolate agar. The clonies are large and grey. Let's see the biochemical characteristic of Cerisia marcinans. Here is a table that enlists the basic characteristics. Gram staining is negative. There is no presence of capsule. Shape is rods. It is catalyst positive. Citrate positive. Triple sugar iron TSI shows it shows alkaline slant and acetic part with no presence of hydrogen sulfate. Indole is negative, ureas is negative, oxidase is negative. It shows nitrate positive, no presence of hydrogen sulfate gas. Mortality is positive, shows VP negative, and lastly, no formation of spores. The characteristic of fermentations are glucose, sucrose, mannitol, fructose, DNAs, glycerol, and D sorbitol are positive, whereas xylose, lactose, arbinose, and refinose, and lastly D nuctositol is negative. Zymatic reactions are lysine decarbolase is positive, ornithinine decarbolase is positive. Arginine dehydrolase negative and lastly lipase is positive. Now let's dive into the virulence factors of Cerisia marcinans. It demonstrates a variety of virulence features such as hemolysis production, biofilm formation and swarming. It can suppress the immune response, increase antibiotic resistance, persist in harsh conditions and adhere to surfaces of medical equipment thanks to some of these virulence characteristics. Number 1. Hemolysin Production The main virulence component for Cerisia marcinans has been identified as hemolysins, SHIA, which is a cytotoxic to fibroblast, epithelia cells and red blood cells. Leukotrinine and histamine are produced with the help of this hemolysis, which rises vascular permeability and causes granulocyte buildup, edema, and other signs of bacterial infection. The SHIB gene product regulates the OMP85 subfamily member SHIA export. Number 2. Lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharide, LPS, which is present in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria, mediates the biological activity of endotoxin. LPS O polysaccharides give bacteria the ability to resist serum death, which can boost their pathogenicity. It protects the cell from hazardous chemicals by limiting their access to target region and reducing their penetration. The structure of LPS in Cerisia marcinans varies because it carries more than 25 somatic antigens. And the last virulence factor is extracellular products. Cerisia marcinans stands apart among enteric bacteria in a number of ways. Additionally, it secretes a number of proteases, a nucleases, lipase, and extracellular kinetase, and a waiting agent or surfidant called Cere written that helps bacteria colonize surfaces. In line with its wide habitat, Cerisia marcinans produce numerous types of differentially fragilate cells, and these show distant types of mortality depending on whether the growing medium is liquid or solid. Non fragilate cells of Cerisia marcinans can also successfully migrate across the surface of low agar media. 
Now let's dive into the pathogenesis of Serratia marcinans. Serratia marcinans, an emerging multi-drug resistant organism, has the capacity to take on a range of clinical manifestations. Due to its worrisome rise in antimicrobial resistance, this important nosocomial infection which commonly affects patients from intensive care units have been designated as a critical priority for finding new antibiotics. This enterobacterium has a variety of virozoan characteristics that allow it to colonize and survive on surfaces including catheter and medical equipment, endure the immune response, and build antibiotic resistance separately. Number 1. Attachment Adhere It has been shown that proliferation affects the adhesion of microbes to host epithelial surfaces. Serratia mercenans produce nosocomial UTI, contains spinae, and attaches to uroepithelia cells. There have been two classes of adhesions proposed. Menos resistance, polyagulinates, chicken erythrocytes in the presence of D-amenos, whereas amenos sensitive pili display amenos sensitive hemoglutation of guinea pig and chicken erythrocytes. Serratia marcinin strain US46 from a human urinary tract isolation was found to have MI2 and MS pili. This study shows that MS pileated bacteria trigger PMNLs to create active oxygen radicals which harm tissue in the infected organs. Number 2. Biofilm Formation Biofilms are made when bacteria collect and cling to a surface. When they are gathered together, they can communicate with one another with the help of quorum sensing. Bacteria are able to live in harsh conditions and develop resistance to a variety of antimicrobial agents thanks to a multicellular behavior such as biofilm development. Serratia marcinans develop biofilms in five stages. Initial attachment to the surface, exopolysaccharide synthesis, establishment of biofilm's basic structure, maturity and cell dispersal. Chronic infections are facilitated by the growth of biofilms. Kindly keep showing your support to this channel by subscribing. Now let's see the clinical manifestation of Serratia marcinans. Serratia marcinans, formerly thought to be a benign saprophyte, is now understood to be a serious opportunistic pathogen, the prosperity for infection in healthcare settings and antibiotic resistance. The most vulnerable patients include those with incapacitating conditions, those taking broad-spectrum antibiotics, those requiring critical care, and those who use tracheostomy tubes or intervening catheters. Infections have been related to contaminated antiseptics and disinfected. Number 1. Respiratory Tract Infection Serratia marcinans has been isolated from a respiratory tract of up to 80% of post-operative patients who acquire Serratia marcinans bacteremia, highlighting the significance of respiratory tract as a significant portal of entry. Number 2. UTI UTI are frequently caused by infected catheter. Between 30 to 50% of people with Serratia urinary tract infections experience them asymptomatically. A few of the symptoms include fever, frequent urination, dysuria, pyuria, and pain when peeing. Number 3. Bloodstream Infection Fortunately, Serratia marcinans infection of donor blood or blood components is a rare adverse reaction to blood transfusion, though it has been well reported for decades. Complications related to transfusions typically manifest as septic or endotoxic shock. Bloodstream infection by Serratia bacteria can result in endocarditis, bacteremia, meningitis, osteomyelitis, and arthritis. Number 4. Wound Infection Serratia marcinans has a high degree of mobility, making it simple for it to transfer from the hands of a carrier to an exposed catheter or an open wound. And number 5. Endocarditis. Rarely, Serratia marcinans can cause this infection. 
In 1970s, it was the most frequent reason for gram-negative endocarditis in intravenous drug users. Next is lab diagnosis of Serratia marcinans. Number 1. Morphological and Biochemical Characteristics Serratia is frequently isolated in the laboratory from urine and respiratory sites using selective culture methods or from the bloodstream or wound sites using blood agriculture. Examples of typical selective agricultures include McConkey agar, which classifies Serratia isolates with the other non lactose fermentating Enterobacteriaceae and chromogenic agars which classify them under the journal Clepsella, Enterobacter, Serratia, and Enterobacter grouping. It was cultivated aerobically at 37 degrees Celsius. The inoculum was subcultured on McConkey agar and blood agar and incubated aerobically for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius when turbidity first appeared on the fifth day. The clony is then observed Additionally, other biochemical tests are run to differentiate the species. Number 2. Automated System Molecular Diagnosis Several approaches and platforms including automated technologies like Wittig and Microscan-1 are frequently available for identifying this bacterium. At the molecular level, 16S ribosomal RNA gene sequencing is used, as well as spectroscopic techniques like Mandy Toff, effective distinction between sericea species is made possible by these two most current techniques. Treatment of sericea marcinans. Sericea marcinans infections may be difficult to treat because of resistance to a variety of medicines, including ampicillin and first and second generation cephalosporins. Although sericea marcinans can be successfully eradicated by aminoglycosides. Resistant strains have also recently been found. Because the killing impact of beta-lactam antibiotic is time-dependent, the duration of the bacteria's exposure to antibiotic concentration over the MIC is a crucial metric for determining the expected clinical result. When an aminoglycoside and a beta-lactam antibiotics are coupled, according to research from a rabbit model, the aminoglycoside causes quick death and a decrease in inoculum. In contrast, between doses of the aminoglycoside, the beta-lactam antibiotic prevents regrowth. Prevention of Serratia marcinans Given the continued evidence of Serratia marcinans healthcare-associated infection, opportunities for infection control depend not only on the careful use of antibiotics but also on the implementation of effective infection control strategies. If there is a disincredible rise in the frequency of Serratia marcinans infections, the infection control team should become involved to stop the spread inside the hospital, especially when multi-resistant strains are found. Each time Serratia marcinans is discovered, all healthcare professionals should be reminded of the need of hand cleanliness for infection management. In order to reduce staff contact, with non-infected patients while taking isolation procedures into concentration, it may also be advisable to isolate patients in certain rooms or units. The best way to avoid contracting Serratia marcinans is to properly and thoroughly wash your hands. And last, Serratia marcinans and research on cancer. Recent studies suggest that Serratia marcinans, post 3 strain novel, proteodexin, MAM, PDM may have a major impact on the treatment of cancer. When tested on cancer cell lines, this red pigment showed a selective cytotoxic effect while being less harmful to non-malignant cells. They came to the conclusion that Serratia might one day serve as a source for a substance that fights cancer. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you.